Hey everyone, Dr. Ashley back this week. I'm going to continue our conversation on what you should do if you experience lower back pain. And I'm specifically here to answer the question, do you need imaging? First off, did you know that back pain is the leading cause of global disability and that 8% of the entire worldwide population will experience back pain at some point in time in their lives? Well, guidelines have been published and things are starting to change a little bit in the back pain realm regarding when you require imaging for that ache in your lower back. Well, before I really dive deeper into talking to you about whether imaging is necessary, make sure you hit the subscribe button below and share our channel with your friends. Let's start with a simple question. Are you someone who has experienced back pain and have you gone to your physician and said, oh my goodness, my back is bothering me? How many of you have received some sort of imaging, whether it be an x-ray, whether it be an MRI, or even a CAT scan for that little ache or that little bit of leg pain you may be having? Well, believe it or not, it may not have been warranted. And it's something that we need to try to change the narrative around. Why? Because you may not need it. And ultimately that MRI, x-ray, or CAT scan may have done not a thing in regards to treating your discomfort. Did you know that almost all cases of lower back pain that individuals experience on a regular basis are what we call non-specific low back pain? What that means is we may never know where it came from. Could it be muscle? Could it be structural? Yes, it could have been. However, what you see on an image may not always correlate. And that's what we're finding more and more. Let's start with a statistic here. So in a research study, there were about 3,100 individuals who had been studied over time. If we look at the age group from 30 to 39, about 50% of those individuals in that category had some type of disc degeneration, degenerative joint disease, and also disc bulges or protrusions on an MRI. So the big kicker here is those individuals had no pain. There was no back pain. They were asymptomatic. So what does that tell you a little bit about imaging and low back pain? I want you to think about that just a little bit more. In 2007, the American College of Physicians and the American Pain Society released guidelines about when imaging is warranted for individuals with low back pain. So take a look at this and we'll chat a little bit afterwards about what you might be thinking. What did you gather from that information? The first bullet point says that for individuals with nonspecific lower back pain, which makes up a majority of the back pain diagnosed around the world, imaging isn't warranted. Well, folks, it's not. The reason being is you are not your image. When we talked about that study that I kind of brought up a little bit earlier in the video, what did we know? That asymptomatic individuals had some sort of finding on an MRI. Now, we cannot dispute the fact that imaging is warranted at times, especially for those individuals who are experiencing things such as cancer or have had a fall or there's a suspected infection. However, what you need to know is that is less than 1% of all of the diagnoses of lower back pain. When we look at that, we really need to look at these guidelines a little bit closer. Imaging continues to be overutilized in the general medical world. The reason being is we're always looking for a why. Why is this this way? Why do I have pain? How do we fix it? Is there a quick fix? And the biggest thing is I just don't want to deal with it anymore. Unfortunately, when it comes to back pain, sometimes just as any other injury, it takes time. But one thing that you should know, most cases of generalized lower back pain go away or at least get better within six to eight weeks. Unfortunately, in the medical community, imaging for lower back pain continues to be overutilized. What has actually been noted is that early imaging for low back pain is associated with higher medical costs 
and it increased absence time from work for a lot of individuals. The other thing that we have noted that it does correlate to is persistent pain. The reason being is that patients put labels on themselves. Well, I'm that individual with a bad back. I was told that early in my days that I have significant stenosis or I have degeneration at an early age. But what people do need to remember is that's normal. And just because you have that doesn't mean that is where your pain's coming from. What you need to know is that correlation does not equal causation. When we see something on an image, it doesn't necessarily mean that's where your pain is coming from. And believe it or not, you may not have even needed that image in the first place. When you experience lower back pain, we have to look at it from a wider spectrum and not just as the image that you are seeing on an x-ray or an MRI. The big thing here is that when you think about that stuff, stop labeling yourself, stop thinking about it as a death sentence and get moving, keep moving and start doing those activities that you've avoided because normally re-entering into activity makes you feel a little bit better. But remember, slow and steady wins a race.